What is Sam gonna do with another two and a half pounds of boost? We're gonna find out. So, oftentimes everybody's always talking about the heat of a positive displacement blower. Well, we already have this thing pretty decently cool. We're about 104, 106 degrees on most of our pulls there. You know, what would happen if we got that, that blower coolant temperature down somewhere in the neighborhood of about 60 degrees? We're gonna show you that too. So two and a half pounds more boost, and then we're gonna go ahead and cool that thing down really good. Coming at you. All right, so we're gonna try and pull this thing off without, normally we would pull the blower. I think we might be able to pull the snout off without having to pull the blower off. We need that half inch extension there. 10 millimeter there. Give it all you got, Georgie. Get a pull hard. All right, so we're, I think we're gonna be able to run the same. I was pretty tight, wasn't it? We're gonna be, uh, well, we're going to be close. So the other thing too is we're going to try and use the same belt with the 255 pulley versus the 231. We might need another belt, but we were on the very, very tight end of that spectrum there. So guys, we do have some future plans for this. This is set up for a 102 millimeter throttle body. This has been ported out uh, in order to accept the larger throttle body. Guys, putting the blower on and off really isn't that bad. We actually did a YouTube video a long time ago before I even thought about really doing YouTube videos on how to r and the blower for a CTSV. So it's about 10 bolts for the bottom of the blower. The top of the blower, I wanna say, is approaching 20 or so. It is a two-person job to pull the blower up and over unless you really wanna have a herniated disc. So this right here is a 2.55 pulley, and what we're gonna put on is our Faster Problems 2.31 pulley. So that's gonna drive this about another 10% roughly. The only unfortunate part about the 231 pulley is that the inside diameter of the pulley requires us to clearance the bearing housing at the end of the snout right here. So once well, the reason we're removing the snout is to press this guy off, and we're gonna have to clearance that. George is gonna grind on the outside so we have the correct inner diameter for that pulley to be able to slide on there and we'll be able to run another hopefully two and a half pounds more boost. Normally we cannot take the snout off with the blower in place. Since we're in a very quick time frame trying to change boost, we are trying to just pop the snout off and, uh, and press off the old pulley, press on the new pulley. Normally it would be a lot more labor intensive in order to pull the blower off and put it right back on. When we threw Leroy together, and I'm gonna say throwback back to Scared My Tuner, you guys gotta check out that video, it was an awesome video. Gotta check that out. We made right at about 700 wheel and 600 pound feet of torque. However, we're doing it with a much heavier wheel and tire through an automatic transmission. So at the engine, we are making a significant amount more power. Bear in mind, we just made 700 wheel and 600 pound feet of torque, actually 614 pound feet of torque to the tires in an automatic car with a heavier wheel and tire, with a heavier brake, and through an automatic transmission. Sam is gonna be on the warpath. So you ready to pull this off there, Georgie? Well, I think we need to put this down. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Side. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is gonna be great. <laughs> That's gonna be fun to get back on. <laughs> oh yeah. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, it's got <laughs> the Junko isolator. <laughs> what were we saying? Force for this blower, man. What's that? That's great. Remember this thing? I mean, I've seen good. better did days. You, did you forget which blower it was? Yeah, I forgot how you know good it really was. All right, this thing is our biggest piece of junk blower, but it is ported too near paper thin. Check her out. So we'll show you this one is what this looks like. And I mean, we can, in certain instances, we will take care of that little bolt. But dude, when you look at how much material is taken out of this puppy, this little guy doesn't even freaking matter. We'll show you what a stock one looks like. You can barely stick your finger in between all of that. Uh, this is very, very thin right here, but all of the uh, areas that flow the most, we take them very, very aggressively to the limit. 
Let's go take a look at what a stock one looks like. All right, so check out how thin what we have done on that blower versus this blower. So right here we've got, I'm gonna call that a middle finger knuckle. And right here, we've got probably like an index finger fingernail or so. Now look at that blower. Now look back at me. Now look at that blower. Now look back at me. Now look at that blower. To be envied. So right here, this does have some limitations and the other part is the snout. So at Faster Promise, what we would normally do is we're gonna take the snout, we're gonna weld it up so that we can kind of gut it and be able to allow the air to get around to both rotors. We take a very large end mill and grind all the guts out of that guy and make it much, much thinner. So if you take a look at that, kind of look at where we're at, like I said, middle finger knuckle. And we got way more than a middle finger knuckle. But like I said, it's pretty darn paper thin there and there's absolutely nothing to worry about inside here. We, there's an isolator that keeps everything together down in here. Nothing even comes out. In fact, some aftermarket blowers, this is totally exposed within the blower. So they have a spinning shaft within the blower and uh, nothing ever really happens. In essence, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a 1.9 liter blower to flow as much as we possibly can. So when we're done with this blower, you know, just kind of giving a rough guesstimate as to what it would do or the output of what it would be analogous to being able to deliver, our 1.9 liter blower, when it's all done and ported, basically flows somewhere in the neighborhood of like a 2500 blower. The ZR1 blower, the 2300 blower, when it's done, it flows something in the neighborhood of about a 2700 or so. So there's more low hanging fruit with this blower. The gains of what we have on this blower is greater than what we'd have on a ZR1 blower, but we've had our ZR1 blowers independently tested to pick up about 35 wheel horsepower. These, many times we've seen them pick up in excess of about 50 wheel. All right, as we received this blower, this guy had a pin in it, and we're going to have to successfully knock out that pin. This might be easy, it might not be, but we're gonna find out. The idea is to press the shaft out and then we're gonna pop that pulley off. Pop that pulley, pop, pop that pulley. <clears throat> There's our two, three, one pulley. So look at the difference there. Pretty substantial. So guys, if you're a snap-on guy, you're probably cringing at this, but if you use Chinese tools, this is totally okay. off some of the ugly silicone. And like I said, this thing is ugly. Just gotta clean this guy off here. And uh, like I said, this thing's had some major, major surgery on the top and the bottom. But right now, we just gotta clearance this guy and knock that thing down so that we can take on our 231 pulley. That is a 2300. That's gonna be fun. So we're in the earlier stages of uh, cutting right now. Kind of just got a few of the things we gotta sander up. And uh, this thing has got a different style entrance than the other, uh, the other blower, but this one is going to be uh, going on a zero one that we have here at the shop. So as you can see, that feller don't fit. Always wear eye protection. Georgie, do I, I don't have any, so I'm, I'm just gonna squint really good. <laughs> squint. <laughs> let it go, let it go. these 2.5 pulleys if you're really interested in them we could probably do them for about a hundred bucks and uh this is for all the zl1 ctsv guys anybody who's putting an lsa blower on if they're going to be using the factory style pulley uh where they don't need to do the crazy offset or anything like that like i mean if you're putting it in uh you know uh, 
a CTSV or something like that, you have to run the custom offset of what they run. But if you're interested in these pulleys, they're about a hundred bucks uh, plus shipping. We got tons of them. If you guys want a 2.31 pulley, uh, those are about 185 bucks. Major part of trying to make a bunch more power here, but uh, we got tons of those guys. Another major integral part to keeping that blower cool and efficient is these thermal plates. These are 375 bucks from Faster Proms. Really do make a big difference on keeping that blower a lot cooler. Typically knock off about 30 to 60 degrees of temp off your blower, and thus it is less likely to spark knock, and it is not as hard on the rest of the cooling system. We have thermal plates for the LT4 as well, and uh, but these right here are for the LSA, and these are for the newer LT4 style blower of which we have on the Porcupotamus. These will fit a Z06 or a new Z01 or anything like that, and this will fit anything with a rectangle style port cylinder head. We're using on our seat, on our Caprice is our four and a half inch CTSV cold air intake. That retails for about 500 bucks major and integral part into keeping the IITs down is you start with colder air and then you end with colder air. So we're all about the efficiency. This thing is a very big, free-flowing, very nice design cold air intake, coupled with the rest of the stuff is what makes all the power. Let's take a look at that puppy after all. So I just put the shaft in there. Nice and smooth. Oh. More power. So the reason for doing this this way, when you're pushing on the shaft, the shaft's going in and down, and it will stop at the same area. That's a quick little pro tip there. Must do in certain order of operations. If you want to take your Chinese extension. So we are actually extremely fortunate that we have our thermal plates on here. Otherwise, this would not have worked. So look at that pretty little pulley right there. Now the real question is, are we gonna be all right with our belt? <laughs> I'm doing this in the interest of my wife. When it's late at night, like 11 p.m., like it is now, and I'm fading fast, I reach for a double shot of Cubano. Feel a surge of energy. I don't really buy anything at Starbucks, but in the interest of my wife, it would save me a ton of money if Starbucks would just sponsor us and just, you know, just, it's for a good cause. Thanks, Starbucks. All right, so our hash mark, we're right in the middle at the moment, so that's nothing to worry about. We got our smaller pulley. I think we're gonna be good to go. I'll let you know if we have any belt slip. How much are you charging for this? Uh, thousand. Thousand dollars? All right, you, uh, we're gonna have to... Uh, Do you think Starbucks? <laughs> I mean, how about I just buy you some Legos? How's that? Better. Better. All right, guys, so I need to, from our old tune that we just had in there with the 10 pounds of boost, I had a really good setting in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably take out about a degree to a degree and a half of timing, and I gotta add just a smidge of fuel. The way that our fuel map is, it should add a proportionate amount of fuel, but I would just rather prefer to be extra conservative on it and just make sure that there's going to be enough there. So I'm going to go hit that right now. Check out what we got on HP Tuners. I'll show you what I'm going to do here. Once we finally did our fourth gear pull with everything set just right, we actually did hit just at 11 pounds of boost. So with the load from fourth gear, we did hit a slightly higher value. So right there we got about 11.3, and at the very, very, very top at about 6,500 RPM, there we have our 77% duty cycle, and we're just over, that's about 11.2 pounds boost right there. So got a very healthy timing curve for where we're at, but like I said, I'm gonna pull about a degree and a half out, and we'll, you know, we're gonna try and just be extra conservative because we are anticipating making another couple pounds of boost. So I'm looking at where I was, right now we are tuning this car with the mass airflow, um, really, I need a bunch more fuel from about 4,400 RPM out. So after about 4,400 RPM, I'm actually gonna throw about seven or eight percent more fuel just to be extra conservative and make sure there's gonna be enough fuel there. Here's the other thing too. Even though we have our return style fuel system, we're holding about 48, uh, 47 pounds. In the event that we drop a little bit of pressure, I just wanna make sure I've got enough fuel there. So I'm gonna throw that extra amount of fuel in there and hopefully everything's gonna be all right. 
All right, so guys, check this out. My wife gave me a freaking awesome gift for my birthday. This is like the genuine mount that the cops would use for their laptop. So you know how you can kind of see if there's a uh, undercover car and they got the laptop right there and you're like, oh, that's a cop. Well, I got one, that's awesome. High five. Yay. Oh, one other thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, when I had the problems with the tranny at the track, uh, turns out that the level of the trans was about two and a half quarts low. So two videos ago when we were uh, topping off the transmission, I had forgot to mention that we were two and a half quarts low, but we are good now. We are, uh, so we're actually four quarts over where we were at that time. So now we are totally good and set. All right, I've been waiting to do this for a while to show you exactly how much boost we gain by changing the pulley and how much power we gain. So we had a very well optimized setup on that last 700 wheel setup. Now, with our 231 pulley, like I said, we should make about another maybe two and a half pounds of boost. So if we make about two and a half pounds of boost, my gut guess is gonna be about 45 wheel, maybe 50 wheel. Let's find out. So we got 40 wheel pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPM with a couple degrees less spark advance. And we're averaging, I didn't rev it all the way out. I got to check a couple things. We got 35 pound feet of torque at 4,800 and a little bit less up top, but really. So we got 32 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. Let's see what we got out the top. We got a very good air fuel, and I think it did spark knock a little bit on that run. I'm gonna try it again and see what we had. All right, let's see what kind of boost that we gained here. So right here, using our HP Tuner scanner there, we're at 191 kPa. So that's an in, indicates about two pounds of boost gain right there. At the top end, we're looking at about a, uh, and I didn't pull it all the way out, that was about 6,000, not 6,500. I just kind of wanted to have a good shakedown on our first pull or so. Uh, but it looks like we picked up about a pound and a half there. I was hoping for a little bit more, but good gain on the bottom end and mid-range. This heavier car needs more torque. So even if we don't gain as much peak power and we're gaining really solid bottom end and mid-range torque and we're really picking that up, that's what this big heavy thing needs in order to get out of its own way. Dude, that's pretty good. 730 wheel horsepower and 655 pound feet of torque. So that is well, I mean, that's like pretty much what Cooper's car made on spray. No spray, single power adder, buddy. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> All right, so I'm not leaning on this that hard. I've got what I feel is a very decent timing map in there. We're right about 21 degrees of timing on E85, 20 to 21 degrees of timing on E85. And we're at 84% duty cycle at 6,500 RPM. So we're still, we're right about 44 PSI on our fuel pump. So we are leaning on it pretty good, but this is something that is doable. This is something that you guys can throw together and it will work. Okay, this is gonna be a load of fun. I was hoping that we were gonna make a little bit more boost, like I said, we picked up about two pounds of boost down low and it, it only made about a pound and a half up top, but a pound and a half and uh, you know 20 or about 30 wheel horsepower, that's a solid, solid gain. So like I said, I was hoping for about two, two and a half. If we would have had that, I think we would have been able to make our 40 horsepower gain, but uh, we didn't quite do it. Um, our, our belt tensioner is right in the middle. So I think that we're really, really pretty good. We could tighten the crap out of that thing and see if we can get some more boost, but I really don't think it's gonna happen. It's not really indicating any belt uh, slip and I don't. we don't have any debris out there. So we haven't even added any ice. This is just as is. So within the blower, the air temperatures are about 106 degrees and by the end of the pool, they're about 100 and, 110 or so, 116. So just it kind of depends on where we start and end, but uh, we're gonna throw a whole bunch of ice in there and see what we get. So this is gonna be an interesting comparison. Well, that was pretty nice and easy. You ready, Nate? 
make some power. Dang, that's cold. Well, I do believe that's going to do a lot better than an aluminum tank. I mean, you know, other than the uh, small pond that we have back here from not cleaning up our leaking mess still, but, you know, it's going to be all right. This is going to work pretty darn awesome. Our insulation, so is going to be really, really good with this setup. That's going to stay cold. We're going to find out tomorrow morning when I get here and see if this thing still might have ice in it or how cold it might be. Okay, so it might look like less than what it actually was, but what that did, we added all the ice in there, our air fuel got a lot richer. And with it being a little bit richer, it actually lost a little bit of power. So we did make 737 and we did make 660, uh, but basically if I were to lean that mixture out a little bit, we should be able to pick up probably about another eight or 10. So most of the time when I have seen cars ice the blowers down, uh, we actually got the air temperature down to about, yeah, 72 degrees, and at the end of the run, it was uh, 86 degrees. So we knocked it down between uh, 30 to 25 degrees or so, all said and done from uh, start to finish. There were some areas where we picked up 19, even though our peak number didn't look that impressive. Okay, so guys, this is really not the best indication of what ice does. I mean, a lot of times I've seen over 20, sometimes 30 horsepower, but because the air fuel ratio got a lot richer, we did lose a little bit of power there. But kind of, you know, if you're dropping about 30, uh, 30 degrees of air temp in the blower, you should be picking up in, in excess of about 20 wheel horsepower. Unfortunately, we got to kind of stop and pack it up and head home. But uh, this is a huge monumental gain here. We're, we're finally doing what Sam should do. So we went from about 450-ish horsepower, and now we're at about 700 and almost 740 wheel horsepower. 290 wheel horsepower gain with about uh, 12 pounds of boost. That is awesome. The torque is is outstanding too, guys. We're gonna go show you the dynograph here in just a second, and the the comparison is incredible. And everything is finally coming together. I mean, we knew the cam of what we we're gonna pick. That Brian Tooley positive displacement stage three. Like I said, man, that thing is unstoppable. We've got super broad power. We've got excellent bottom end and mid range torque, and the drivability is fantastic. I, before I was complaining about how the torque converter was just too tight to be able to leave. Now that we got like 250 pound feet of torque more on the bottom end, that super tight torque converter is no longer gonna be that tight anymore. We're gonna be able to have a nasty 60 foot and everything is now going to come together and work well. So, what can 12 pounds of boost do for you? How about 260 wheel horsepower? 260 wheel pound feet of torque. 352 to over 610 right there. Okay, if you guys recall, and check back on some of our previous videos, but here's our dynograph from our heads and cam full exhaust. So this is pretty much all of the stuff while it was naturally aspirated on full E85. We made right at 446 wheel on this particular dynograph. So right here, we're picking up 280 pound feet of torque at 4150 RPM. Right here, let's go right to the middle and see what we got. Right about 250 exactly 250 pound-feet of torque at 5200 RPM. Uh, that's a small gain, yeah. No, that's a very, very substantial gain. This is gonna feel like, pretty much like we took about 2,000 pounds right off this turd. It's gonna make such an enormous difference. It is going to pull good. Guys, even though we got an automatic with a big fat drag rate on it, we are moving in on where neighbor is right now. So Cletus, it's uh, it's getting to be crunch time, getting a little closer here. Even though we might make a little bit less peak overall power because this thing is an automatic, it is going to roll. I just gotta get make sure the trans shifts just right, and I think now that we got the right amount of trans fluid in there, everything should be good. This is normally something I can nail pretty well, but you know, as they say, stuff happens. So we'll see how this goes. But guys, big, big, big pickup, 12 pounds of boost. This thing is rocking. So I am super stoked to get this thing on the street. It is raining. We have uh, tropical bands coming in from Hurricane Michael. So unfortunately, we can't really do a street test tonight, but hopefully the next couple days. Plus, we got methanol coming on. So Sam is going to hit the meth. It's going to get better. This power right here that we have is just going to go up. 
So what we do with methanol is we're going to have a twin nozzle methanol injection, which is like 116 octane. It's going to be spraying really nice and hard in front of those rotors. It actually helps seal up the rotors and make a little bit more boost. So we might be able to pick up another 25 or 30 on meth, plus it's going to be safer and we can run more spark advance. We'll see what it does, but look forward to that very, very soon. Oh yeah. That's the whole Uncle Sam thing that kind of kicked this thing off. Guys, check these guys out on our website. They're about four bucks a piece plus shipping. This is what helps support us. Also check out some of our t-shirts and all that. We got the power sprinkles. We got our faster proms. And we got our faster prom shirt right there here. To recap this build, please check out some of our previous videos that we have on Sam. You know, we started with this car and it had a messed up lifter and it's a $4,000 car. So again, guys, this is a $20,000 nine second build. That's what the formula is here. Uh, next video, like I said, we're going to have methanol and we're going to have our budget breakdown. Really kind of spread things out, let you guys see what we have in it. Kind of the recipe, of, if you will, of what it took to get to where we're at. We should be right around the area of what should be able to run a 9. Uh, my, my mathematics kind of call for about 740 wheel in order to do it, and we are right there. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a mission in order to get to where we're at here. So God bless you guys. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Got a lot of fun stuff coming your way. See ya. Good play day.